Hey, what's going on, beautiful jellyfish? My name is Tracy. Hey guys, I'm John. Uh, John Martin, he's pretty cool. He kind of sort of won a GP, so <laughs> um, I will be listing the down bar, the yeah, the deck in the down bar below. This is going to be a dredge deck tag. So um, give me your take on dredge. What's going on with it? Why do you like it so much? Um, I've been playing it for roughly a year now, and it's like my all-time favorite deck. Uh, well, besides Birthing Bond, but that deck you can't play anymore. <laughs> Sad. Sad times. Yeah. Um, anyways. So Dredge is really fun. Dredge is really fun. It's like super interactive, or super non-interactive, which is like the type of magic I enjoy playing. Fair. Um, I did decide after uh, GP Minneapolis last weekend that I don't actually like playing magic. I just like killing my opponent and then having like 30 minutes to do nothing. Uh, Dredge fits right into that in the modern meta. Like, your game one, your opponent doesn't really get to interact with you at all. You just kind of like do your thing and then hopefully it's good enough. And then they have to win two and three. Which when you're going like a Grand Prix, having that high of a percentage is really, really good for you to have like a good finish or cash day two, whatever it is. So, super fun. I love the deck. Very nice. And it's funny because like I don't really know that much about this deck. And then when I was like, let's see your deck back on Dredge if that's cool with John because I was like, I don't really know that much about this deck. Like coming from my old local game store, people didn't really play this deck. It's not as popular. I feel like it's not as common. So I had to study up a little bit and do my research on the deck before we did this because I don't really know that much about it. So... Um, cool, let's get into it. Um, so, first card is Bloodgast, four of them. Talk to me about the card, why do you like it, what's going on? Yeah, so Bloodgast is kind of like the meat and potatoes of the deck. It brings back your prize amalgams, uh, because like Bloodgast has landfalls, so whenever a land there is a battlefield, you can return to the, from the graveyard to the battlefield, and then that in turn will trigger your uh, your prize amalgams, which are three threes, and they come back to the battlefield if you had a uh, creature enter the graveyard, enter the battlefield from the graveyard. Um, so blood gas are super strong. They're really hard to kill, really hard to deal with. Absolutely. Like your opponent can cast like a uh, like a wrath of god effect. That's like cool. You have fetch line out, and you just like fetch away, and then go get four blood gas back, and you're like your card did nothing. Good job. So like path to exile is really good against it, but a lot of like yeah. basically other removal spells that are in the format, things like lightning bolt terminate. All that sort of stuff is really pretty useless yeah, against exactly. this. So it kind of just keeps coming back. Mm -hmm. He's got like nine lives. Yeah. Cool, blood gas, cool card. Um, then we have Golgari Thug. So Golgari Thug is one of your enablers. It's a um, it's part of the dredge mechanic. It's a dredge four. So essentially what that means is like whenever you go to draw a magic card, you can decide, I don't want to draw naturally from my deck. Instead I want to put four cards into my graveyard from the top of my library. And Golgari Thug does that. It also has this weird corner case ability. So it's a uh, one black, one card, no, one, one. Uh, Okay. Yes, Golgari Thug. Sweet card. Dredges a lot. Does a lot of cool things. Yeah. Cool. Um, okay. Uh, and then we have Insolent Neo Neat. This card's lit. This, yeah. This, card this card's sweet. Lit. It's a, it's a red magic card that draws me like 17 magic cards. This I card love. does like so many things. And it's funny because when I was looking at your deck list earlier, I was like, you're running this card? This card's sweet. Yeah. Love it. So it's got Menace, which is how relevant is that? Is that kind of relevant? Uh, so play? so we played um, GP. This was a while ago. It was about a year ago. But we played uh, Team Modern Constructed at GP San Antonio. It was like mm -hmm. uh, me, Javi, my friend Javi, and then uh, my teammate Jeremy Fry that was also on San Antonio. Yeah. And Jeremy was playing on the Dredge deck at the time. And he beat multiple opponents going uh, turn two rest in peace, which is an enchantment that exiles all graveyards so by cool. just having neonates attack because they are a one power creature with menace. And menace was fantastic that tournament. I love this. And I feel like your opponent, like, they don't want to lightning bolt this. Like, they don't want to oh, have yeah, it. No. Like, that sucks. Like, you don't want to have to do something yeah, like, like that. Yeah, like, you're going so to, like, sweet. use a removal spell on, like, a crappy 1 1 creature. Like, no one, no <laughs> one wants to do that, right? Like, it's awful. You know a card's, like, good when it's, like, you want, you don't want to lightning bolt it. When you're like, yeah. this sucks if I have to waste this spell on it. Like, I hate it. But yeah, it's sweet. You discard a card to sack it and you draw a card. Like, this yeah. does everything. And you just, like, you always get to, like, replace the draw fetch with a dredge. The best thing about that card, though, is the discard is part of the cost. So you get to discard mm -hmm. one of your dredgers and then immediately dredge cards. So, like, turn one, you can play that, or you can play a different card that we'll talk about later, which is better. But that card's still a sweet play on turn one, and it's good after. This card kind of seems unfair for one mana. Like, let's be real here, but overall sweet. Um, okay, then we have Narco 
Nike Amoeba. Nike Amoeba. Okay, sure that. Uh, okay, two mana, one one flyer. Oh, you guys know I love my flyers. When it's put into the graveyard from your library, put it on the battlefield. What's not card to like sweet. about this? <laughs> card sweet. What's not to like? This card's awesome. That card won me my trophy. So. Oh my god! Like again, unfair. And it's a flyer. I just got a vision. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we were just talking earlier about how, and earlier in like 30 seconds for this video, we're like, we both just get really excited talking about magic cards. Yeah. So it's the best. Okay. Ah, uh, card's great. Okay. Um, prized. Am Amagla? Al Al. Am Yeah. Okay. Cool. You know how to say all these things. Oh, uh, cool. Uh, three mana, three fee. When a creature ETVs, if it entered from your graveyard or you cast it from your graveyard, return it to your graveyard to the battlefield tap, beginning of your next end step. Your next step. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so Prize Amalgam is the most powerful creature in the deck just because it's a 3-3, three, three, which like doesn't sound like a lot. You're like, wow, you're going to pay 3 mana for a 3-3? Three, three? You never really pay mana for this card. So like, ideally, you want to you want Dredge and then you might hit a Blood Gas or a Narc Amoeba, have them enter the battlefield, and then that'll trigger your Prize Amalgams. Um, and I've had games, I had a game last night in the win box at Major Sanctum where I went, um, I went like turn one, like, Faithless Looting, discard a bunch of cards, turn to uh, Dredge 5, and I hit, like, three prize Malgums and Neonate. So I just randomly had 10 power on board on turn 2, and I still got to Dredge more magic cards after that. And I was just like, all right, cool. And my opponent was just like, I can't beat that. And I was like, yeah, of course not. Like, who can? That's living the dream. Wait, then don't yeah. you just kill them on turn 3 if they yeah. can't do anything? Yeah, it's great. This guy is good at magic. He knows what he's talking about. Wildly this is medium. sweet. <laughs> oh, oh my god. Wow, I just realized that they're both from um, Shadows. Shadows of Rainer's Shadows. Yes, that yeah. Ooh, so Shadows, Shadows did, good job. did a lot to improve the dredge deck. Before Definitely. it was like pretty fringe in modern, and then Shadows print, printed out um, Prize Amalgam and Neonate, and it did a lot to improve the deck. Absolutely. Definitely sounds like it. Um, cool. Okay. Ah, uh, Stinkweed it. This card's so good! Like, this uh, card's so good. Uh, and it's so funny because a lot of these cards, like, you look at them and you're like, oh, it's a 1-1 one, one, or oh, it's a 1-2, but it's like, no, like, it does so much more. Yeah. Sweet. Okay, it's a 3-mana 1-2 flyer. Oh, flyer. Deals combat damage to your creature, destroy that creature. That's sweet. Yes, it is Death Touch. That's and, awesome. And it's really funny because sometimes people won't realize it's Death Touch, so you'll, like, hard cast it for, like, the 3-mana, and then you'll just be like, block your 5-5 your five, five creature, and they're like, cool, that dies. I go... Yeah, this has Death Touch. And, like, and they're always like, it's like ah. the biggest blowout because they just don't realize. I'm like, that card has text? I'm like, yeah, yeah, it does. I feel like that's one of the things cool that's about Dredge. And maybe it's different where you guys play Magic, but like, it's not a huge, I don't know about here, but like, when I played in New York, Dredge wasn't like a really big thing. So I think it depends yeah. on like the meta. Like, if you're playing this deck that like not a lot of people know, people think, I know what that Magic card does. And I feel like some Magic players, and I'm one of them, I'm like, I don't, I don't need to read the card. I know what the card does, but I don't know what the card does. And a lot of people are like really stubborn about that. And I'm one of those people. So I feel like a lot of people wouldn't read this and be like, yeah, that does have Death Touch. So, Especially yeah. early on in testing, I'm like, wait, that card has that like what oh yeah dude oh. i i'm side note but i i misread mantis rider the, you know mantis yeah, rider, yeah. the Prima, um america card and i thought it had like i don't know flying or something and i was like i can't kill that it's got flying or like it whatever hexproof and it doesn't have hexproof <laughs> read read the card people <laughs> anyways and then it's got dread five mm -hmm. yeah Hello? so that's like that seems unfair. It's dredge. Think of dredge as like a draw mechanic. Essentially, that card says you get to draw five magic cards. Op. But if you combo that with like say a faithless looting, which is you get to draw two cards and then discard two. If you hit two of those, you get to draw ten magic cards. And who doesn't want to draw ten magic cards for one minute? Right. That's like living the dream. <laughs> it's people. really good. Straight up, <laughs> love it. Ah, this deck's making me excited. Okay, cool. Uh, okay, then we got into um, spells. So then we have Conflagrate. That's a cool card. I like it. It's like one of your, um, I would say, ways to deal with things yes, in the deck. It's it doesn't have powerful. that much, but um, not ways of dealing with things. But this card does. So it's XX. Deals X damage divided amongst you choose amongst any number of target creatures or players. This is like really great mid range. I feel like if you're going into like the late stage of the game where you're like, I've got like this Stinkweed imp on board and like nothing else, and you're just like blow you out with like Conflagrate. Yeah. That's super cool. Like, who doesn't want to like cast this card for like six? That sounds sweet to me. Wait, no, that would be six. You'd have like a lot of mana. Never mind. Oh, that no, no, work. no. There's more oh, than no, that. Oh, no, there's card. flashback. There's flashback. <laughs> Don't forget about that. Oh, yeah. Okay, so it's got flashback, and then you discard X cards. 
yeah. Yeah, so the flashback cost Thanks. is normally what you're casting the card for, and it's super sweet because you get to yes. go like, um, you pay red two red mana, discard X cards, so like, say you want to discard six, then you get to deal six points of damage wherever you want. Normally, it's at your opponent's face because they're just dead from all like the creature damage. Probably. Because you're a swarm deck, but um, I have had games where I would like turn one, cast it for one, dealing like, cast it for one red, dealing no damage, and then turn two, my Fandy, my robot's opponents is like, Play a bunch of dumb one ones. I'm like, cool. Flashback can flag on turn two, kill your board, and then they Dude, just die. Your affinity matchup seems like it's so good. Oh yeah, it's hilarious. Just, <laughs> they can't yeah. win. It's great. Yeah, seriously. I mean, really, I, this card's super good against any sort of like little creature type of decks where you're just like, ah, hey, kill all like your stuff. Card's awesome. Um, okay, cool. Then we have Dark Blast. This is cool. It's a. It kind of like pokes something. It's like minus one, minus one. But hey, it kills Snapcaster Mage. <laughs> Important people. It kills Bird of Paradise too, it which is really good. It kills Bird of Paradise and other and like the parts. whole affinity deck. Yeah, pretty much, basically. <laughs> and it's at instant speed, so you can do like Blink Moth and Ink Moth, so that's pretty cool. And then it's got Dredge 3. Mm -hmm. So that's basically one mana, draw three cards, and then you get to kill something. Yep. Yep. Sweet. I like it. Uh, Faithless Looting. This card is like. It's close to like the probably the best card in the deck. Um, and like I'm starting to play a lot of decks and putting that play faithlessly because I think that it's actually just like a borderline broken almost. Like it's really good. Definitely. But yeah. I feel like this card gets thrown by the wayside a lot. I feel like because blue tends to be the draw and stuff, but like this yeah. is a really fantastic card too, and it's got flashback. And one thing too I want to note about flashback that I said this before in my other videos is I feel like, and I don't know if you've noticed this, that people like forget about flashback. Oh yeah. Like unless I'm avidly looking at your graveyard, I probably don't know what's on your graveyard now when you're playing dredge obviously there's stuff going on and you want to look at what's going on in their graveyard but i feel like you're like oh you should have faith suddenly like, who cares about that it's like, yeah exactly draw cards discard sweet oh this card does everything i feel like everything that you want because people normally it's like discard you don't want to do that but you want to do that in the stack yeah so good okay lit cathartic reunion <laughs> This card's cool. This card's awesome. This card's one of the most powerful enablers you have. Totally. So I'll let you explain it. Yeah, uh, you discard two and then you draw three cards. Basic. Two, man. And it's awesome because um, you get to discard discarding cards again as part of the cost. Right. So on turn two, you can discard uh, you can discard two dredgers. Uh, you're hoping to discard two stink redims. And then on your draw, you dredge five, dredge five, and then you're hoping to hit another stink redim. So that's essentially draw 15. When Gilgari, uh, Gilgari Troll was in the format, it was a draw um, draw 18, which is like dredge six, and you get to do that three times, and like, your opponent could never win. It was amazing. Um, but really? card's still really good, and it's like a four of in all the decks. Um, and it's, I think it is like your most powerful turn two play that you can have. You just see so much. You're honestly selling me on this deck because I love drawing cards. Like, who doesn't like drawing cards? It's amazing. But it's, it's like, because I'm a blue mage, so it's like, I want to draw all the cards. This is like selling me. Oh, so good. Uh, Life from the Loam. Obviously. Card's great. Um, we're turn up to three, land from your grave with your hand, and you judge three for two mana. Card's sweet, and it makes Card's your awesome. conflagrate that bigger. Like, I yeah. had a game where I had like six mana, I think, and I like cast two Life from the Loams and then conflagrate my opponent for like 12. I was like, Satisfying. I was like, this seems pretty good. <laughs> I would say so. Yeah, no, just talking about all these new cards, I feel like that came in the set, how much better this deck has become. Oh, really, yeah. definitely, definitely, which is super cool. Um, okay, I have, I'm, I'm, this, I'm curious about <laughs> Rally the Peasants. Like, what's, what's going on here? Just a one of, but like, what's up with yes. that? Uh, just a one of because it's your like, it's like your miser, like, ha, I got you card. That's the flex slot in the deck. Makes sense. Yeah, so a lot of a lot of decks have started playing um, uh, Driven to Despair, which is a new flashback card from, I think it's like Omniket or something, but basically, like, the front side doesn't matter, and then the back side, you give your guys Menace, and then whenever a creature deals combat damage, you'll play your discard that many cards. Mm -hmm. um, I like Rally Peasants more because it just kills your opponent. Like, you hardly ever hard cast it for, like, the white and uh, two cardless. But you're normally going to cast it for the flashback, which is red and a colorless. Give all your creatures plus two, plus O. Oh. Like, you attack, it's an instant. They go, yeah, sure, no blocks, I'll get to one. And they're like, ah, no, you're just dead. 
And again, it's got the flashback, which is important. Unless someone's avidly staring at your giver, they may forget you have this card in there. And it's cool too, because like with flashback, like you don't know when you're gonna cast it. Like you may just swing and then have something else that you're gonna do with your mana, but then it's like you're like scared, like, oh rally the peasants, or even yeah. if they don't, they probably won't even know you're playing that, to be honest, unless it's in your favorite. I had a lot of people in Santa Clara look at it and were like, what is this card? I was, I was looking like, at the and I was like, I gotta ask him about this. Yeah, I don't great. know. It's That's great. awesome. Um and you brought up a really good point about like flex slots. I'm like mm -hmm. totally all about that. And like one thing too, I feel like is decks are never set in stone, and I hate when people think that. It's like no, yeah. like there should always be room for improvement and there should always be growth and like decks yeah, should always exactly. look different, especially after sets come out and just to see the impact. Um so yeah, sweet, I like it. Um, and wow, okay, that's like actually it. Yeah, yeah. we're not going to be talking about <laughs> lands because, you know, lands are pretty basic, no pun intended. Sorry, that was really <laughs> That was awful. That one, like, that actually, like, went over my head. <laughs> and then I, you start laughing, I was like, what's the play? Oh, we got it. We oh, got magic player joke. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and then sideboard, as I told John earlier, it's so, I mean, you know this, that it's meta-dependent, yeah. and, like, it's going to look different everywhere. So, um, yeah, that was pretty much it. Thank you so yeah. much for yeah, reviewing no this. This is really cool. Um, hope you guys enjoyed this, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.